bad not to write my babies. Hey guys, it's Ayo with you again and I'm back to you and I hurried to you as soon as I have submitted my thesis. Oh yes, I did it! And it seems like, it feels like I didn't move away from the hard feelings after the submission and I have decided to record everything that I have learned in this period of my life and what I'm feeling right now. And in general, I want to share with my experience and to tell you some moments of expectation and reality and maybe share some, maybe share with some tips and recommendations. <sighs> Let's go. By the way, I'm going to the library today, but not to write my thesis. Oh my God, I'm so happy that I have submitted my thesis. And today I'm going to show you the places, the spots where I have spent my whole evenings, night and the whole day. Let's say last three or four months. Let's go. to the learning hub and book the room for us because I'm gonna share all thoughts in my head and tell you the student's vision of the entire process of writing a dissertation separately in sections with and without support. So let's go, shall we begin? So a standard dissertation, what is it and if there are any other options to choose among. Uh, let's start with the fact that yes, there is a choice. In my case, my program is Education for Sustainable Features in Adult Youth and Community Contexts. I was given a choice between standard dissertation and a challenge-based dissertation. Uh, but I chose first one, standard dissertation, because the second one seemed more complicated due to the fact that I need to find the organization or company where I can work and identify a problem and study this problem. So it was more like project. So for me, as a, like, let's say for the beginner in the academic world, um, I thought that it will be a good start uh, if I will choose a standard dissertation and immerse in an academic environment and uh, focus more on writing um, rather than working in the company. But if you want to have, a, um, let's say, more interesting experience where you can find an organization and you have some thoughts about that, I think it's a perfect option for you. And uh, now I think that if I would go back Maybe I would try the second option. If during the course of the academic year we performed different types of assignments like essay, poster, uh, presentation or um, let's say critical dialogue, then the dissertation can be considered one big assignment uh, on a certain issue. Let's go through the structure of a standard dissertation. First page is a title page. It's easy here, you can use a template. Second page is a table of contents. Third page, acknowledgements. Here I have to note that I was pleasantly surprised when I find when I found out that um, you can show your gratitude um, not only to 
academic staff of your school or your supervisor, but also to the people who are not directly related to your study. It can be your partners, friends, neighbors, family members, so on and so forth. Because mostly people who listen to you in a difficult moments, in a stressful moments, at the moments of confusion, it's people from your environment and it's great that you are given a chance to show your gratitude and thank them in your dissertation. Acknowledgements, abstract, table of contents and title page is not included in the total word count. So it's a great opportunity, use it. Abstract is a brief overview of your work, including research questions, methods of data analysis, and your conclusions in a concise form. Imagine that someone has found your work and wants to understand what it is about and what he will find in it. So the main purpose of your abstract section is to familiarize your reader with your work. It would be helpful if you read a lot of examples of other people's research abstracts. I think you will get it. And the main part begins starting with introduction and ending with conclusion. Between them, you will find sections like literature review, methodology, findings or results, and discussion. My biggest advice here, and as it is usually advice to all students, to start writing your whole dissertation with literature review. I did the same. I started writing literature review, let's say from the end of the first term, but I redid it, I updated it until, let's say, I think it was, yeah, I did it. I updated last time when I, when I updated my literature review was in June. So it took a long way. Um, that was because I wasn't sure with my, lit, my, with my research questions and the research goal or aim. Um, so I advise you to start liter writing literature review when you are sure with your re research questions. A literature review, in simple words, is a review of existing works on your topic or around your topic. And at the end of your literature review, you bring to the fact of the existence of a gap in the, uh, of studying particular issue that you have posed as a research problem in your research. This way, you put the, put the focus on the relevance of your work. In simple words, your text will look like something like that. Here, author one argues about this and that. However, author two brings a criticism against the argument of the author one. However, there is another group of uh, authors who argue that X, Y, Z is well developed, but there is a little, there is a very little research about X, Y, Z in the context of A, B, C in the particular country, for example. It should be taken into account that this part, literature review, is the is one of the very voluminous or massive part of your dissertation after the discussion chapter. Therefore, it would be more logical to divide it into subsections so that your reader will not get confused. In general, there are useful internet resources and uh, books in the library that you can use for writing uh, your literature review section. I will share uh, these uh, resources later in this video. The most important thing about writing, about starting a dissertation by writing literature review is that you will get opportunity to delve into uh, your research um, area, your research topic, and uh, all the issues or um, research that were uh, done before you. So you will get familiarized yourself uh, with the all existing works. Methodology is the second part in turn, which turned out to be, in my experience, the most complicated and not, not clear. And this is a part where you have to ask for your supervisor's help because you are asked to identify here three main things. First one is your personal philosophical assumptions uh, as a researcher conducting this research. The second one is your method of data collection. And the third one is your method of data analysis. Your supervisor can help you to identify the most suitable methods of data collection and data analysis and also can guide you to 
identify to find out the most um, how to say the philosophical assumption that fits with your beliefs it can be for example you can be realist or you can be constructivist you can be um, critical you can you can be holder of critical views so it's important to ask for your supervisor's help here you will save time and since you haven't conducted any research up to this point, it may be difficult for you to decide on the methods of data analysis. After all, there are many of them and you need to be able to choose the right ones in accordance with your research questions. And uh, in simple words, your reader, after reading this part, should understand what you believe, aka philosophical assumptions. Uh, and the your reader should see that your data your research is reliable um, and that means you cannot just argue or may create an argument about something without showing how you got this data and how did you analyze it and because on this data you based on this data you are drawing conclusions my experience has shown me that you have to ask all the questions uh, that have arisen in your head, even if they seem to you stupid. No, they are not stupid. They are really helpful. If you ask about them from your, for your supervisor, then you got all the answers, then you don't waste your time. It's really helpful to um, your time management when writing a dissertation because you don't have long time dedicated to dissertation. You are limited in time. So please do not waste your time and ask help for your, from your supervisor. But as I have heard, this part is not much criticized as it is in, at the PhD level, especially if you have a taught degree, not research degree. You can also read books on research methodology in social sciences uh, from our library. They have really good books that helped me a lot. And also I will provide some internet resources that can uh, help you to define, to decide on research methodology, um, research methods, the methods of data collection and methods of analysis. After collecting and analyzing the data, you move on to the next section, findings or results, which has the main function to familiarize reader with your results. For example, in my case, I have conducted a thematic analysis that revealed, which revealed four thematic units. Correspondingly, um, they were considered as an answer to research questions. But the most important he thing here is not to forget that you should not proceed to interpretation and discussion of your results. No, 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 please don't do that because you will waste your time again. You have to remember that there is another section which is called discussion for interpretations and the for discussion of your results. So save your energy for that because findings or results section is dedicated only to introducing, only for introducing your results, your findings. That's it, without interpretation, without explanations. Well, the most voluminous, massive and main part of your dissertation is discussion chapter. Here you, you are expected to interpret your results in accordance with your research questions and explain them in details. For example, I explained my revealed four uh, thematic units um, in accordance with research questions and also used here philosophical assumption that I have chosen in methodology section, for example, it was social constructivism. It means like everything that we know um, is constructed by the society, is constructed, is created by our way of thinking. And my research was focused on social media use by teachers for teaching and professional purposes. And I was using social constructivism and as a theoretical framework that I have to identify in the methodology section as well. I use critical pedagogy because I studied it in my courses and I was well familiarized with it. And I advise you to choose the theoretical framework or theory uh, that you really know well, because you will it will be easy for you to link and to use it in your research. Uh, so, in my study, 
I uh, used social constructivism and critical pedagogy. How did I link it? I thought that everything that we know in the society is constructed by the people. And for example, that the way we are teaching our students, that the teacher is the only person who can teach, is constructed by the society. And there is another alternative um, of teaching and learning uh, in, by integrating social media with teaching and learning processes. And I was linking it to critical pedagogy and inclusive education as critical pedagogy focuses on active learning. And I was giving examples of social media integration and creation of active learning um, activities. So that's it. You don't have to present critical pedagogy theory as I did uh, in every sentence of my discussion, just in the places, just in the moments where it's relevant. That's it. You have to show that you are presenting your arguments in accordance with the theories, in accordance with philosophical assumptions, that your work considers many aspects of the research. And it's not isolated only, and it's not limited only to your um, view. It's considered by many different aspects. So keep in mind that. One more point, I advise you to thoroughly study the analysis formatting options before you start data analysis, um, data analysis uh, phase, because um, you will have to find, you'll, you will be searching for certain uh, statements, sentences, statistics, data among your, among plenty of analyzed papers. And in order not to get confused, not to lose this data and not to um, spend a long time on searching, I advise you to devote some time before you start analysis. And uh, you can you can watch some videos on YouTube. For example, I have found the most suitable analysis format uh, that I have used for thematic analysis. It was table in the YouTube video. So I really recommend you to, to do so. Um, what what it, why it is important because when you are writing your discussion chapter you interpret your results and provide evidences and your evidences it's your quotes from the papers that you have analyzed um and uh, without evidences without quotations without citations to these works that you have analyzed your argument cannot be considered reliable so Anyway, you will need to provide quotations, you will need to cite these works, so please spend some time on preparation. And we have to and you have to keep in mind that at the end of your discussion chapter, your reader should get the main idea, the main answers, your main answers and your main arguments to against not your main answers to the research questions. If you feel like you are not sure answered you or not, you can ask, you can ask your friends uh, to read your work and ask their honest opinion if they think that you have provided full answer to your research questions or not. So that will help you to, um, to see objective uh, opinion, to see the objective, how to say, to look at your work objectively. And since discussion chapter is the most massive part of your dissertation, I strongly recommend you to write specifically without repetitions, without watering, just write specifically, concisely, what you mean and what that means. That's it. Because you are limited in word counting. For example, I was given, I was given only 15,000 words for my dissertation. And initially I was thinking about writing five, six, 3,000 words in discussion chapter. However, it, it turned out, um, that I wrote 6,000 words. So you see the difference. Expectation and reality. So do not waste your words, uh, on repetitions. Okay. You got it. It's better to leave parts like introduction and conclusion at the end since without other parts done you cannot write conclusions or identify study limitations and the future research implications. Most of all, your supervisor can give you help and support as it was in my case. Here I can advise you to arrange with your supervisor to record your conversation when you are having a meeting. 
um, you won't be able to remember all the details, all the recommendations, all the suggestions, all the feedback that your supervisor can give you at the meeting. So later, if you have recorded your conversation uh, with your supervisor, you will be able to um, recall them to, uh, how to say, you can effectively use the, all, all the uh, suggestions, recommendations, feedback if you listen to them before you start writing a certain part of your discussion. It was really helpful for me because uh, when I was having a meeting with my supervisor, I thought that I'm getting everything and I'm rem remembering everything uh, that he told me. But later, let's say maybe two days later, I will not be able to memorize, remember what he suggested to do, what updates, what um, feedback he provided me. I, of course, I remember the general uh, general feedback, but I didn't remember the, the details. So this is a tip from me. After completing the writing process and when you have a full draft, it's advisable to read it again and so you can see the weak parts of your work and accordingly you should leave enough time for corrections. Now let's move on to the useful resources that I can recommend you. As one of the most helpful internet resources, I can recommend you GradCoach YouTube channel. Uh, this channel provides brief but at the same time full of details suggestions, re recommendations on how to write dissertation in sections. Here you can find information on research topic formation, research methods, and some tips and recommendations on how to avoid common mistakes as well. Next good resource is from YouTube as well, the channel called Research with Dr. Krukov. Dr. Krukov provides a really good explanation of the whole process of writing a dissertation and not only and specifically I found his channel uh, really useful because of his explanations of uh, various um, methods of analysis including a thematic analysis that I have applied in my research and also you can find here many videos that can help you to understand academic research Important to note that our library has plenty of academic papers and books that can make your writing process easier and not so stressful. I recommend you visiting High Demand Collection on the third floor as there are two books that took me out of stress when I was writing my methodology section. Especially when I had to define my philosophical assumptions and choose research methods. If you are doing research in the field of social sciences, I recommend you to take a look on these two books. You can loan these books for only 24 hours and I'm going to show you how you can do that. To borrow these books, you will need your student card. Just scan the barcode and tap the finish button and when you are done with this book you can return it the same way the writing process itself takes the whole day or often the evening times as well so it's advisable to have a good interlocutor in the face of your partner or friend who can listen to you and support you if you need it or favorite food or sweets in order to keep your mood positive. 
For me, it was watching Korean TV series and cakes. Although it sounds insignificant, believe me, it's really important to keep your mood positive. And one last advice is to read as many examples of dissertations as you can, so that you can get used to writing and structuring styles of dissertations. I wish you good luck and bye!